Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai. I think you can see it getting brighter. The sun has come out, and you potentially can hear my little guy over there screeching. So this is going to be a clips episode, uh, because I'm going to film it in parts as I get a minute from chasing him around. So... <laughs> What's on my needles? I cast, or I got the book and I cast down. I don't know if I showed it to you last time. French Girl Knits by Kristen Griffin Grimes. Um, I purchased the book because of the, I think it's, it's got to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular pattern, which is the, if I keep flipping, I'll find it. The Jasmine, um, I knitting, knitting Daily featured it in one of their emails and I saw it before the book came out and it's like, I have to have that. So I ordered the book, went through it. I did, I talked about this because I had found some patterns in here that I liked for my, for some of the gift knitting I'm going to do. So this one, the Tartine, um, is this really cute little hat. It is the cover hat. Oh, I could have just shown the cover. <laughs> and it has a spiral effect. Um, boob shot. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so disorganized. <laughs> um, yeah, so I finished some projects. I decided to cast on. So I had some, I, for some reason I really want to try and use this yarn in as many projects as possible or something. So I had this bit of uh, Madeline Tosh Merino Light in the thicket colorway left over from two other projects. Ah, uh, yeah. Don't worry, you'll get to see him too. <laughs> and um, I dug out a skein of leftovers. This is Claudia Hand Paint in the color, ooh, I don't know. And I don't know show notes written down. So together, that's what they look like. And I have, as you can see, just cast on and done the first couple of rows. So you, it's, you know, you start with that cute little edging and work your way up. So I'm really pleased with how this looks. And it's going to be a, a Christmas slash birthday gift for one of my friends. So, I know, so excited. Um, let me show you what I finished. <laughs> All right, Rowan, what do you have to say? Are these finished socks? They are. Are they made out of Barocco? Socks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for the kisses. <laughs> you hold one and I hold one. Oops, we dropped it. Yeah. So they're completed. You can see this weird bump here on the side. And that's where they're wider to fit my father's feet. These are the socks for dad that I was working on. They are a two by six rib. Two by six rib. They're both finished here, floating around. And you got a little bit of roll on me there. Yes, I took someone's advice and um, used the leftovers and cast on for a pair for this one which we'll show in the next segment. Yeah? I had um, initially split the skin of Barocco sock into two, so I could do two, have two, each sock on the needles at the same time. So I had these two little tiny bits left, and I cast on, because what kind of show would it be without a map cameo? <laughs> I cast on um, for a pair of socks for Roland. These are just a two by two rib toe up. It's my own little pattern here that I keep doing. I um, knew I wouldn't have enough to complete the whole sock, so I used a skein of this. This is Jane Knits in her Boston colorway. She's no longer, that's it. She's a dyer that's no longer a business owner. She was a dyer, but I don't know how you say it. But I had a scan of that, so I thought I would sort of treat it like a gradient. I don't know how well you can see that. And stripe it in. 
as I ran out of the other one. That would be the rattle. Um, so that was the first one. I finished that off and then passed on the second one. So this pattern, um, there's the second one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I initially wrote this pattern for to fit size six months. But as I was knitting it, I lost track of time and I kept going. And so this is too big for Roland to wear right now. So what I think I'm going to do, and plus the hand knit socks I have knit him, I'm not real comfortable with him wearing barefoot in the house anymore because he's on his feet and running around all the time. So I'm going to get some puff paint and put it on the bottom, put like some of these, you know, to make it a little more sturdy for him. And do you know, do you have any recommendations for that? I knew a lady once who did it, but I don't know what she used exactly, and I'm mono craftual, so I don't know, like, I would go into Michael's and wander around until I found what I think is the right stuff, but I'm not sure, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know. Yes. Um, so that's on the needles. What else do I have to show you? Oh, the socks I've been knitting for... Steph of Busy Minds Design. Here comes Linus, or there goes Linus. Don't look if you don't want to see him, Steph. I'm also going to use them for uh, Knittable's Stripey September socks, because they are definitely stripey. This is another, um, another skein of Barocco sock, and this one is, I think it's 1435 on my project page. And you can see I'm doing Ann Bud's Undulating Red Pattern. I really like it. It's a great uh, pattern. It's out of... What's the book? Favorite Socks. He's sitting on the floor in front of his toy box. Now he's clicking at me. In front of his toy box, pulling out all the... Uh, his, his two toy boxes. Upstairs box, downstairs box. And so he's getting to the bottom and seeing all the things he hasn't seen in a while. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, this is from Favorite Socks by Interview Press. And here's what the skein looks like. So you can see, and there's it knitted up so far. So it's really nice to knit for someone with small feet. I wear size 11 and I believe she wears size 8 and a half. So this foot is, maybe it's a 9, I don't know, but this foot is remarkably smaller than most of the socks I knit or dad's socks that I just finished. Those are massive. So that is going, going, going. I also finished a square for an Afghan swap. So this is Malabrigo Rios. I'm not sure what the color is. It's a teal color, but um, I, I used it as a way to do a uh, gauge swatch, not gauge swatch, but a stitch pattern swatch. So this is actually one of the sweaters. The, if I could talk, you would really appreciate it. It's the, the stitch pattern. And boy, doesn't it look different on variegated yarn or with variegated yarn. So I did one of those. So that is also on and off my needles this week. For Steve's birthday, I got it. Roland picked out <laughs> this uh, card at Walmart. We were, at, actually, we, we were strolling around, whatever, killing time in Walmart one day. I, we needed to get his father a birthday card, so we got him one circus themed, you're amazing. Yay! And it, it lights up. And it's been Roland's toy since July, so here it is, September. Yeah, two months later and he's still playing with that card so he really really likes it so off my nails and then lastly I sort of put off recording so I could have this finished <laughs> my Rockefeller is done 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 it's off the needles it's glorious to have it done and I was so worried about running out that of running out of yarn that I had brought in that thicket colorway. <laughs> yeah. 
brought in the thicket to stripe for the wings on the side. So there's the first wing and I tried to spread out the Into the World Inara colorway. So you can see how I, um, I think it's Fibonacci sequence. I spaced the use of the Inara out more and more and more and more and more. Or further, further, further. First one away, then two, then four, then eight, then more. Uh, and then when I finish that side of this, I, and I'm going to insert a photo so you can see it all out because it's really pretty, but I can't really get it all on screen. So, um, so when I started the, the second side, how about I show you the front? Ooh. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> when I started the second one, I, um, uh, started that same idea but then I got annoyed because there was so much left and then I just finished the whole tip with it and <coughs> oh, excuse me I still had a bit left so perhaps this will be a cupcake top but uh, there you go it is off my needles of course you can see all the strings hanging I have not woven in my ends Steve calls this my turkey shawl he's so kind but it's done. It's done. It actually is the first shawl that I've ever knit that's, because this is sort of a weird shape. And I did make the wings a lot shorter, right? It's the first shawl that I've knit that, like, sits, like, hugs around my neck and just sits perfectly like this. Like, I can just chill. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if I'm going to wear this to the office. <laughs> it's a little bright for me. But it's done. It's done. It's done. And I don't have show notes in front of me. So that's me running through the projects on the needles. And that's Roland's music still going. I hope he wasn't too much of a distraction. You may or may not know that last Monday, Labor Day, was his birthday. So we had a really great, really great birthday party. My mom actually, uh, threw it for us because I was very overwhelmed with work and life. <laughs> so she had this great Sesame Street theme and got a smash cake and a regular cake for us. And we had such a, such a blast just being together and laughing and reveling in our son's adorableness. So it was a really good time. And yes, he ate the cake. I'll uh, share some photos, but he was so funny because Given his personality, I definitely would have thought he would have been a, like, two-handed. No. Finger frosting. Finger frosting. <laughs> it was so funny. So, I hope everything is going well in your knitting world. And this was a short episode, but hey, we got to talk. So, I hope you're doing good.